Math time. Classification of quadrilaterals. All right, so we have here an illustration of a quadrilateral. Now, what is quadrilateral, by the way? It is a four-sided polygon. And of course, quadrilateral are named using consecutive vertices. And it follows with a particular direction. And that could be in clockwise direction or counterclockwise direction. All right. So the symbol you have it there is used to denote a quadrilateral. So based from this illustration, let us name the quadrilateral. So to name once again, this quadrilateral it follows with a particular direction. It could be clockwise direction or counterclockwise direction. So from here we used to have the counterclockwise direction. So this could be quadrilateral S T A R. Quadrilateral T A R S, quadrilateral A R S T, and quadrilateral R S T A. That is in counterclockwise direction. Now, how about if it is in clockwise direction? Shall we start from vertex R? So we have quadrilateral R A T S, and quadrilateral S R A T. And quadrilateral PSRA and quadrilateral ATSR. Take note you cannot name quadrilateral, let's say SART. No, it shouldn't be. You're not allowed to rumble those uh, vertices for you to name the quadrilateral. If we're going to connect vertex S to vertex A, we can form a particular segment. And what do we call that particular segment? That is what we call diagonal. So based from this illustration, how many diagonals can be formed? So from there, we have diagonal SA. We have here this one. And diagonal TR. So these are the pair of diagonals. So speaking of the pair of diagonals, what about the pair of consecutive sides? So let's start from this side, ST. What is the consecutive side of ST? So when you say pair of consecutive sides, we have here segment ST and segment TA. And segment TA is consecutive to segment AR. And segment AR is consecutive to segment RS while RS is consecutive to segment ST. So therefore, there are four pairs of consecutive sides. Now, how about the so-called opposite sides? So from here, we have side ST. What is the side opposite to side ST? So side ST and side RA. And segment TA and segment SR. So these are the pairs of opposite sides. Now, how about the pair of consecutive angles? So angle S and angle T. So these two angles here. And angle T and angle A. Angle A and angle R. Angle R and angle S. So these are the pair of consecutive angles how about the opposite uh, opposite angles well of course we have angle s okay we have here angle s is opposite to angle a and angle t is opposite to angle r so once again these are the basic parts of a quadrilateral Quadrilaterals are classified as follows, one of which is the so-called parallelogram. When you say parallelogram, it is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides, just like in our illustration here. So, this side in here is parallel to that side. And in the upper part, we have here that side is parallel to this side in the lower part so there are two pairs of parallel side and that's why it's called parallelogram 
Next up, we have the rhombus. When you say rhombus, it is a quadrilateral with all four sides are congruent. So just like in our illustration, that these four sides in here are congruent. So let's say if this is 5, of course, the other side would going to be also equal to 5. And we have here the rectangle. So when you say rectangle, it is a quadrilateral with four right angles. So this is very common uh, quadrilateral because we can see this one anywhere. So from here, it says that the angle here, these angles are right angles. So when you say right angles, it forms 90 degree in measure. Next up, we have here a square. So when you say a square, it is a quadrilateral with four congruent angles and four congruent sides. So it's going to be different from rectangle. Only that this quadrilateral, uh, all the sides are congruent. So it's just like when you say a rhombus. So all the sides are congruent. And it says also that the four angles here are congruent. So it would also be a rectangle. So meaning to say, it's just somehow a rhombus and a rectangle. Next, we have a trapezoid. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exact one pair of parallel sides. So just like in our illustration here, the parallel side we have in the upper part and the lower part. So these are the pair or I mean the pair of parallel sides. And this side in here are said to be non-parallel side. And take note, when this non-parallel sides are congruent or congruent in measure then we can say that this trapezoid is an isosceles trapezoid okay so next up we have a kite i could still remember when i was a child we played kite so to illustrate we have here now when you say kite it is a quadrilateral with two distinct pairs of consecutive sides that are congruent Again, two distinct pairs of consecutive sides that are congruent. So let's take a look. Where are these two distinct pairs? So the first pair, we have that one and this one. That's one pair, which are consecutive sides. And in the lower part, we have this one and that one. That's the other pair. So again, these are the two distinct pairs of consecutive sides that are congruent. So we have here the schematic diagram of equilateral. So in this side, two parallel lines. So we have here that one, or shall we say, one pair of parallel line, lines rather. So that is now what we call the trapezoid. And again and again, as I've said a while back, if the non-parallel sides of this quadrilateral or trapezoid are congruent, so we can call that one as an isosceles trapezoid. Okay, next up, two pairs of parallel lines. So this line here, and that one, and that one. So these are the parallel lines. So there are two pairs of it. So we call that one as parallelogram. Under parallelogram, we have the rectangle and a rhombus. And of course, I, as I've said a while back, that a square is just somehow a rhombus or a rectangle. So that's it. And on the other side, we have here the no parallel sides, but it has two distinct pairs of congruent uh, sides, or consecutive sides. So that is a kind. At this point, we are now ready to answer the activity. Plot, connect, and identify. And for sure, we have to follow the directions. Plot the following sets of points in the Cartesian plane. Connect each given set of points consecutively to form a quadrilateral. Then, identify the quadrilateral's form. Okay, so let's start with number one. Point A, negative one, two. Point B, negative one, zero. And point C, 1, 0, while point D, we have 1, 2. So let's locate where is point A. Okay, so negative 1, 
2. So that would be here. So that's the first point. And our second point, we have negative 1, 0. Okay. Next up, we have 1, 0. That's the point. Next up, we have 1, 2. So that's the point. So let's connect them together. You would have therefore. Okay. So what figure or what quadrilateral is being formed? Okay, that's correct. So that's a square. Okay, so let's now have number 2. 1, 0, 3, 0, 1, negative 2, then 3, negative 2. Let's look at first where is 1, 0. So our 1, 0 is here. The second point we have 3, 0. 1, negative 2, so somewhere here. So that's the point. Next up, we have 3, 0. So 3, negative 2 rather. Okay, that's the point. So if we're going to connect them together, you would have it there. Okay, so it forms what particular quadrilaterals? You are right. So that is a square. Congratulations. For number 3, we have negative 2, 4. Negative 4, 2. Negative 1, 2. And 0, 4. So let's locate that one in our Cartesian plane. So where is negative 2, 4? So we have 2, then 4. So that's the point. That's the first point. Next up, we have negative 4. Okay, then positive 2. So this would be our second point. Next up, we have negative 1, positive 2. So here is the next point. And lastly, we have 0. Okay, 0, positive 4. So if you're going to connect them together, you would have it here, the figure. So what kind of quadrilateral is that? Well... You are right. It is a trapezoid. Next up, number 4. We have 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 0, 4, 2. Let's locate that one in our Cartesian plane. We have 3, 4. So that is found in quadrant 1. So here is the first point. Next, we have 2, 2. So positive 2, positive 2. So that's the second point. Next point, we have 3, 0. Okay, so here is our third point. And lastly, we have 4, 2. So 4 is x, y is 2. So that is in here. Okay, so let's connect together. You would have it there. Okay, we have what quadrilateral? Yes, you are right. That is a rhombus. Now let's have number 5. So we have negative 3, 4, negative 3, 2, 2, 4, 2, 2. Okay, let's look at where is negative 3, 4. So our x is negative 3, then positive 4. So that is fine in quadrant 2. That's the point. Next, we have negative 3, okay, and positive 2. So this is it. So that's the second point next up we have negative 2 so here negative 2 and positive 4 so that's the point the third point lastly we have positive 2 and positive 2 so that's the point so if we're going to connect them together that's the line and there you go okay so what particular quadrilateral is it well, you are right. That is a rectangle. Lastly, we have negative 3, 1, negative 2, 5, 3, 5, 2, and 1. Okay, let's locate that one in our Cartesian plane. So we have negative 3, positive 1. So that's the point. Next, we have negative 2. Okay, where's negative 2? Positive 5. So somewhere here. Okay, next up, we have positive 3 and positive 5. So, here is the point. Lastly, we have positive 2 
and positive 1. So that's the point. So if we're going to connect them together, you can form, yes, that is a parallelogram. That's very good. Now let us proceed to the gameplay. You are asked to state whether each statement is always true, sometimes true, or false. At this point, I'll be giving you only 5 seconds to answer. Alright, so are you now ready? Okay, so let's start. Number 1. A square is a rectangle. Ready? Go. And the correct answer is always true. Okay, next up. A rhombus is a square. Go. The correct answer is false. Yes, you heard it right. That the rhombus is not a square. Next, number three. All rectangles are square. Go. The correct answer is false. And number four, all squares are parallelogram. Go. The correct answer is always true. Okay, so let's proceed to number five. A square is a parallelogram. Go. The correct answer is always true. You heard it right that the square is a parallelogram. Okay, next number six. A parallelogram is a rectangle. Go. Yes, the answer is sometimes true. Okay, number seven. A quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Go. The correct answer is false. Next number, we have number 8. A rectangle is a square. Mm -hmm. Go. The correct answer is sometimes true. Okay, number 9. A square is a trapezoid. Go. And the correct answer is false. A square is not a trapezoid. It's not, yeah. For number 10, we have a rhombus is a kite. Uh huh. Go. And the correct answer is false. You have it there. So thank you so much for listening and I hope that this lesson helps you in learning mathematics. Knowing that learning math is fun. Thank you so much. God bless. Wow.